Well, good afternoon or good evening if you're in the beautiful USA. If you are overseas and it's late at night, or if you're in the Pacific Rim, then it is already wonderful Wednesday. I am Bruce, aka Mr. Simpler, Faster, Better, or the guy in the blue shirt, as a lot of people know me on here in LinkedIn. And uh, I am so honored to have Miss Bonita Lee, and we are going to get into some interesting stuff around different types of networking. So hi, Benita, thank you for joining. And uh, let us know a little bit about where you're from and uh, what we're gonna cover here. Hi, Bruce, it's my pleasure and honor, thank you. Um, originally from Canada, and right now I am in Minnesota, Duluth. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I, or A, right? Is it A? <laughs> You'll get That's that. Right. A, A, oh, you get that joke all the time. All right. Well, hey, Robert Perry. Robert just jumped on. Thank you, man. Good to have you on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Benita, if you see some of your connections or you see any questions, uh, fly into the comments and don't hesitate to jump in. And uh, if you are watching this as a replay, you can put hashtag replay and uh, Benita and I will still get back to you with comments or answer any questions. So no problem if you miss it live. All right, so um, tell let's tell a little story about how we met, which is the first step of networking, right? So uh, as I recall, I started to cross-engage on some posts that you and I were in. And then why don't you take the story from there so that we can build up towards talking about different types of networking and different types of net, uh, connections in the networking arena, so... Yeah, no, and it's great that Rob is here because he was probably that common connection that mm -hmm. really connected us to because I remember seeing him accept for a LinkedIn local event that you were right. having. Yep. And I was like, oh, Robert's going to be there, so I'm, I'm going to join him. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'm going to go network at this LinkedIn local event. And right. That's how I met you. Yep. And it was hosted or co-hosted with Gracie Ruth Melendez, right? That's right. Yeah. And I found it interesting because before the pandemic, I had gone to these LinkedIn locals mm -hmm. in person. So right. in Houston, I had gone to a few of those and met really good people. Um, yeah. And so when I saw that you were having a virtual one, mm -hmm. I thought, I need to go to that. Right. Well, I'm so glad you did. And actually, that's how Gracie Ruth and I met. We met a LinkedIn local in Los Angeles. And uh, I was pretty clueless about what happened. And uh, hi. So yeah, let's say hi to Neil and Andrew. Um, Robert, thanks for your uh, endorsement. And Neil saying, a hey, a hey, you know, <laughs> oh, good old Neil Young. I worked with Neil Young a long time ago. So hi, Neil. Good to see you again, man. So uh, oh, I thought you were talking about the singer. <laughs> no, no, unfortunately not. So that would be um, the singer that I have a relationship is actually with Neil Diamond. And actually Neil Diamond uh, signed my guitar for me a long time ago. So how about that? Cool. Well, this looks yeah. so scary. I love it. Yeah, it is. So the power of networking, right? So I yeah. met Neil through uh, a person that I knew that knew his wife and then his wife's personal assistant. And then we ended up going to a concert. And then after the concert, I got introduced to him and then through uh, that. And then I also met his Neil Diamond's mom. So cool. and from, uh, Neil Diamond's mom actually came and had Thanksgiving with us one year. So that was kind of cool to learn all the stories from her. She was uh, almost 100 years old at that point in time. So she had a lot of stories. Wow. Yeah. You lived a charmed life, Bruce. <laughs> a charmed life? <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know I came from pretty humble beginnings because we covered that offline here. So... All right, so let's uh, let's talk about the uh, different types of networking. And of course, there's virtual, and there's been a lot of that recently. Uh, I think you and I are more alike. I prefer in-person, and I am very lucky to be... I went to an in-person networking event run by Tisha Maria Pelletier a couple of weeks ago. So she runs an organization called Social Connect here in the... Gilbert Chandler Tempe Arizona area and it was a wonderful event 
and uh, that's another great story. I met Tisha Maria Pelletera through engaging on other people's posts. Uh, we exchanged being LinkedIn live guests and live interview guests a few times. And then um, fast forward to two months ago, uh, she got her real estate license and helped me find my rental house. So here in Tempe, Arizona. So, you know, what a great full circle. And you never know where it will go. People that you get along with, what I call my jive tribe, uh, they become priceless, meaningful connections to me. So, Absolutely. And I'm going to have to say that, um, surprise you and say that you're wrong. I actually prefer the virtual networking oh. because I'm an introvert. Mm. So I find that when I virtually network, I can shut the screen and, you know, go fetal in bed, whatever I need to do okay. um, immediately. But when I'm in person, I really need to like prime myself, pep talk myself. I'm like really nervous going in. Right. Well, actually I have, there's always something that comes out common ground with my live guests. And that is I'm actually a behavioral introvert as well. So it exhausts me doing in-person events, but I've had to learn. And I was telling you offline that a lady called Dee Dee Lee, he back in 2006 grabbed me literally and said, I'm going to pick you up tomorrow and I'm going to show you how to network in person. And that was the most dreadful, scariest. I still remember the emotions as she dropped me off at the front door of this hotel we were going to. And she took me in and she said, you're over there on that table and she left me. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. And I didn't learn how to network formally. It was just through right. my jobs in the corporate world where I was thrown into situations where I had to network with customers, vendors and at trade conferences. Right. That yeah. I really just like fumbled along and built up the right. skill. But you're right, as an introvert, people don't realize it drains two or three times the amount of energy if you're naturally a little bit more behaviorally outward going. And a lot of people don't know that. And and there's actually a lot of introverted leaders. And that's why, particularly if they're going to public speak, they need their alone time kind of offline. Don't, don't interrupt them. And then as soon as they're done, they'll typically take a resting period to recharge themselves before going to meet or maybe sign some books or whatever. So that that's why it, because it's totally, it zaps all your energy. So right. anyway, so, all right. Well, Jose Montilla is from, uh, Hey man, thanks for joining uh, and hopping on from Southern California, which, which city Jose. So let us know. I used to be in Southern California until August one, when I left the Santa Clarita Valley. Yeah. And Jose's in Long Beach. Oh, you um, know him? Yes, Jose and I actually are doing a LinkedIn Live on Fridays called Coffee Break Logistics. Oh, all right, yeah. all right. Logistics or just anything that comes to mind? Supply chain, logistics, trade, mm -hmm. you name it. Okay, well, I have a supply chain background as well. So there's that second common ground that we... Exactly. I just love lives. There's all this common ground that never comes out until you talk to somebody live. So yeah, Newport Beach. I love it, Jose. Great, great part of Southern California for sure. All right. So um, you were intrigued about a conversation we had offline about uh, there's different types of connections or I had in my world defined different types of connections. So uh, what about yourself? Uh, do you have different types of connections and uh, for different reasons? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I think your stats are right on there because it's probably about one in 20 people that I connect with that I really can get on a groove and we have something in common and I feel as though we can collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, on that LinkedIn Live, I met Vernon Webb. Right. Right. Yeah, Vernon. Vernon Webb was intrigued by what I said to you about book club. He came to book club. Right. And now he's my pr executive performance coach. Uh huh. So uh -huh. who knew? You don't know who you're going to meet. Right. Yeah. Vernon's a high quality, a lot of width and depth of experiences, and he's just got 
such a calming nature about him. You know, he's he's not hyped up like I get sometimes. <laughs> so, or me, yeah. Right. So having that calm, steadying the ship sometimes, right? When your emotions are running high and uh, you need somebody that can kind of cool you down. And um, I have a couple of people in my network like that. Connie Medina is probably... Uh, my best person at that and i use connie she's uh over in los alamitos california and um again connie and i met through linkedin and then we went to coffee together and then that was two years ago and we built a very meaningful long-lasting relationship and uh yeah so the that common ground i call them my jive tribe and you know the, like jive, the jive for me is very important uh because I get frustrated spinning my wheels, you know, wasting time because I'm all about making things simpler, faster, better. So, and I actually live, I try and live that lifestyle. So when things aren't simpler or faster or better, it starts to frustrate me. So, yeah, so when I spin my wheels. Huh? It's the tribe that gets your vibe. Huh? It's, the tribe that gets your vibe. it's the tribe that gets your vibe. Oh, I love that. That is mm -hmm. really cool. So we should add that to the comments afterwards. So it's, it's unfortunate with live stream and LinkedIn, we can't add our own comments. But uh, Or if somebody else wants to put it in there, we could do that. So. Oh, I'm going to do it right now. While oh, okay. You talk, while you talk about those levels of connection. Oh, okay. All right. You don't mind if I kind no, of... No, uh, I, I, I think people need to hear this. Okay, so yeah, Bonita and I were talking about connections, and I've identified that connections into three categories for me. There's what I call just a click connection, and typically a click connection is somebody that you don't really have any background or relationship with, and typically they're going to try and market you a specific service, and they tend to do that straight away or very early on in the talking relationship. And then my second level is a connection. I don't really have a good jive or good energy exchange with them, but they're really good people and I know who they are and they know what I do, but they're probably not going to be in the next category, which is the most important category to me, which is building a connection into a meaningful connection. And uh, so the meaningful connection, how I would define that is these are people and for me, it's kind of 20 to 30 people. They're not always the same 20 to 30 people, but I spend most of my interconnectivity time with them. And the way I know that they're a meaningful connection is if I need or need some help or guidance, uh, I usually have their number so I can text them or call them and they will always get back to me in 12 to 24 hours maximum. And the other thing is I feel very comfortable and safe asking them for referrals. So, so those meaningful connections become part of my strategic growth, both width ways and depth wise in terms of uh, my goal is to always spend my net disposable income inside of the LinkedIn family. So I might regret saying that out loud, but that's my goal. <laughs> But it's only going to come from, you know, I'm not going to share my um, needs or abilities with people other than meaningful connections that also jive with me. So so those are the three levels. So I don't know what people think about that as they listen to this. And what, what are your comments or thoughts on that, Benita? Well, I really love your strategy and it's very intentional. And I think that, you know, I could, I could use that um, in thinking about my connections. Right. Now, some people call them like A, B, and B, A, B, and C strategy connections. And in fact, people that sometimes use uh, customer relation, relation management software will often right. term them as A, B, or Cs. I, I don't like the classification because sometimes uh, uh, just a connection can become a meaningful connection for a while and then they might go back to being a connection or a meaningful connection might be a meaningful connection for a while and then they go back to being a connection so for me it would be hard to keep up with the classifications and um and life is dynamic right you know some it's very situational it's very dynamic and sometimes you find yourself in a spot like i have in the last few months major changes 
came at short notice. And so, you know, I reached out to all the help I got came from my LinkedIn connections or my prior network. So, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of my meaningful connections are here. Um, you know, Rob, I was on his podcast. I met him through Trent. Trent invited me to be on his podcast. We're not even in um, the same field, but we found a way to uh, kind of talk about the intersection of our fields in yeah. these podcasts. So, Right. Well, hey, I, Abraham. Abraham is a great example. So Abraham, I met also through a LinkedIn uh, local virtual. And um, yeah, honestly, you must connect with people or the end of the, yeah, at the end of the day, despite how, how skilled you are. Absolutely. And, um, and you're a great example of that, Abraham. We were telling you feedback the other day about, you know, our observation, how far Abraham's come. Abraham didn't really say too much in his in our first LinkedIn local virtual but uh, the other day he was communicating and sharing and caring and doing all sorts of stuff and it was like wow one year later you know it's an amazing difference in somebody uh, from the initial meeting to you know our conversation last week so it's pretty cool yeah well as humans we all need people we all need connections and we all need support and so networking is just a tool to do that right to right. develop those relationships to develop those conversations and the collaborations sure yeah and jose is talking about you know the importance of having a great elevator pitch yeah again to me that's a tool um you know an elevator pitch is gonna maybe help you or it could actually prevent you from getting to the next level with a connection so i i tend to be very long term very strategically orientated about the connections that i want to develop and uh the ones that i don't then i i'm not rude to them or i try not to be rude to them i don't purposely <laughs> you know, leave them alone. But, um, you know, it, there's only so much time that I have to deal, you know, do meaningful collaborations. And so you, you have to pick and choose who you do that with. So that's right. It's very um, seldom that you'll see me being transactional. Um, I mean, yeah. in a networking room, you know, I'll um transact with some people hi how are you and then never talk to them again but with those meaningful connections um it's a long-term game yeah absolutely and you know the transactional you know i call that the happy glad there's always a component of in-person networking which is the happy glad and being polite but uh you will gravitate to people that have similar energy and similar thinking around you know what what they want to do with their time and how they want to spend their time so and that's okay it's you you can't be all things to all people you can be the best you can be to people that get you and want to spend time with you so so that's how i look at it may not be the best way but that's the way i look at it so absolutely yeah no that's what we're here doing we're talking about it i mean a lot of people think networking is scary bruce did you know that yes i've uh, come to understand that i had been a little remiss and forgotten that because i hadn't you know it's like when we were just talking in setup um when i told you about the story about dd Lee dragging me along to my first networking event in 2006 it's like i still don't you know i still don't forget the emotions and the turmoil and as soon as we started talking about it i had an immediate flashback to that moment. I, I can even remember the temperature and like the sounds when she came in her car to come pick me up. It was like, so it's pivotable moments. And, and that was because I was, you know, I was running on fear. I, I was running on apprehension and fear. And so I always remember that moment. So absolutely. Yeah. So sometimes I forget in gaining that experience that, you know, other people aren't maybe at the point in their networking process that I am. So, so it's a really right. good reminder. Yeah, no, I'm um, more comfortable with networking than I am with public speaking. So. 
I agree. <laughs> but I have some I uh, I have some great exercises to help with uh, public speaking because you know, as people know, it's a requirement to in certain industries and certain types of jobs that you have to at least be able to present in a meaningful way, even if it's not on a big stage. But you know, even team meetings and eight briefs, you know, I do a lot of eight briefs, both virtually and in person. And, and they just, they still make me very nervous. You know, I still get like butterflies in my tummy and I have to do my little relaxation exercises before I start the presentation. And yeah, so that, that one is a tough challenge for me still. So. Oh, wow. Well, I'm honored to be, um, here and for you to invite me to um, and trust me to be oh. on your live right so uh what i've learned to do on that so the guests i ask have um certain characteristics so what i've been able to do because i'm a process guy so i've been able to identify what those characteristics are uh number one before i invite somebody to be a guest and then when I do invite them to be a guest, I, you know, I want them to feel comfortable that they're okay to just talk with me and free will in the conversation around a theme. And if they're okay to free will in a conversation around a theme, then you, you just never know what you learn. I mean, I've already learned a couple of things about you that maybe I wouldn't have learned for months and months and months. So, so that's the joy of doing things live is your, you have no choice. You can't run away, right? You're <laughs> That's right. And I love how you um, develop like the psychological safety around that. So mm -hmm. good yep. job on that. Well, so, um, you know, people say to me, well, how do you do what you do in my, you know, process cleanup thing? And I say to people, it's very simple. It's 60% what I call people engineering, which is the whole making people feel comfortable and want to share and want to learn and want to be honest about what's happening. And then the rest of it is process. So, you know, people and process equals performance. And that's what a lot of people miss the simplicity of. And yeah, it's a complicated world, but fundamentally when you get down to it, something that performs or a process or a system that performs well it's got the right ratio of people um, process to get that performance. And, and if you tweet with the ratios too much, you can mess the whole performance aspect up. And, uh, and what people don't realize is the pandemic has shifted a lot of that ratio between people and process. And some people have not dealt with it really well. And some leadership are totally lost still. They still don't know how to readjust because they used to have the people and process in the ratio in a certain way, but now they don't know how to get it back. So, right, right. Well, let's let's break down, uh, you know, networking in like a sort of a process kind of way, so that right. it can be, you know, less scary to some of us out there that you know are attempting it for the first time. There's in person and there's virtual. Right. Um, so what is the process you kind of go through, Bruce? So first thing is you got to show up. So showing up is whether you want to show up. <laughs> Don't feel comfortable showing up. <laughs> or a little scared about showing up. The first step is you got to show up. And if you can get past the fear or what's holding you back, it may not be fear. It may be resources. It might be time. But if you can get to the point where you show up, that's step number one. Uh, engage, being present, being in the moment, engage in either the listening or the talking or some of each of the whole process of interacting with other people. So being engaged and in the moment, focused on the moment, using your extraordinary listening skills and that's why you got two ears and one mouth right you should be listening twice the amount of time that you're talking so that's that's the ratio and then the other key thing is when you feel comfortable with somebody if you say oh i'm gonna i'd like to follow up with you on this or how about we follow up on this hey do you want to grab a coffee some other time or tea or or a beverage whatever it is 
you have to make sure you follow through on your commitments of follow-up and that right. and that to me is where networking always breaks down people are really good at the show up they're really good at the engagement they are not so good at the follow-up and follow-through and i'm not sure why i wish i could figure out why um but that's the secret element. If you want to become an extraordinary networker, you got to show up, engage, and do fabulous follow-up and follow-through. That, that's what I find. And the people that do fabulous follow-up and follow-through will be more comfortable. They'll get more opportunities to show up, and they'll get more opportunities to engage. So it becomes- Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um- so two or three weeks ago, I went to Dallas for my first in-person trade conference. Mm-hmm. And just um, coincidentally, I met a younger woman who had, it was her first trade conference. Uh-huh. And it was, she had only been in the industry for six months. Oh, wow. I know. And I was like, and she's like, I'm so nervous. And I'm not going to give out her name because I I don't want to embarrass anyone. But I said, let me be your buddy. Let me be your buddy. I remember when it was my first conference and Mm -hmm. how intimidating that can be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, I I think I kind of went through it with her. Like, I just I just assumed that, you know, she would. Um, learn by example. So I did that thing, what you were just describing. And then at the end of the conference, we got back together and we had um, drinks Mm -hmm. and I took out the business cards and I said, this is what I do afterwards. I go onto LinkedIn and then one by one, we inserted everybody into our LinkedIn. I was like, and if you can remember something that you talked to them about, you should send them a quick message and say, Hey, it was great to talk about this or that. And I mean, that's how those opportunities come about. Right. Yep. So uh, another thing that um, was helpful for her to, for her to hear is um, you don't need to be nervous because you think about it as making (laughs) others comfortable, helping others, listening to their pain points. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, no, it's just like making a friend, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I love the fact that you were hashtag Bonita Buddy. So good job. I think you should. Be <laughs> and then uh, I don't know if you know this, but let me show you something. So on your LinkedIn main page, if you go, if you touch this funny little in the search button, you can get a QR code of your entire profile. So you don't need a business card anymore. Interesting. And then, and then all you do is you just have somebody take a picture of your QR code and it will open their profile and it gives you then the option to follow or connect. So and this- that, yeah, that reminds me of JV whom I met through you. He was going to help right. me with something like that. So yeah, I should so, back in touch with JV. So that, let me let me do that. Let me see if I can do that because some people don't. So it's this tiny little electronic in the search line. Right. Hard for me to do it on camera at the same time, but it's in the search line because I can't do it backwards. And then it's right next to the quotation mark. And then you just oh, press on it. I got and, it. Yeah. So you don't need a business card anymore. In fact, the last meeting I went to, Social Connect, I. I think seven eighths of the people I talked to didn't know they could do that. And then somebody just takes a picture of your QR code and it gives you then the option to follow, connect or ignore it. And then they can do the same. Right, right. Simpler, faster. It's it's touch free, contact free. It's also simpler, faster, better. So you don't. And then right there, if you're kind of, you feel people in your jive tribe or whatever, you can message them right there and then and say, Hey, just had a great conversation with you at social connect or at the trade conference. How about we follow up in a few weeks or whatever, whatever. No, why whatever. wait till later? Why wait till later? That's right. Well, now you've improved my process. 
Are you going to be sending me the bill? No, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a free process pay note. <laughs> it's a free one? Okay, it's thank a free you. free process pay note. Hey, everyone, everyone that watches this can see it too. And many, many, many people don't know it's there. And um, so, it, yeah, it's an amazing tool. And it's an amazing time saver. And it's also eco-friendly because you don't have to, right? right? And it's well, also, well, I'm never printing business cards again. You don't need to. It that saves me money. money. Absolutely. No business. Well, and the other thing, you've made an important point. It's touch. It's touchless. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people get a little scared about, you know, transferring things around now because we know that bad things can live on inert materials now. So, yeah, it's touchless and it's it's just safer. It's just polished. It's a very professional way to make sure that you exchange information and, and that you follow through on your commitments that you say you're going to do. You don't have to remember then. Agree. So, yeah. All right. Enrique. Hey, so uh, my leadership man down in Florida, uh, he's just joined us. Thanks, Enrique. So, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. you. I just noticed you put in the steps. So, yeah, in, show up, engage, follow through. And the follow through is also follow up to make sure it always always remember what you promised and deliver what you promised because people remember that. And if you don't do that final thing, they get all whacked out because said, oh, well, that Bonita, she promised me she was going to do that. And look, she didn't do it. So, ugh, you know, why would I why would I waste my time with her is the immediate reaction usually. So, yep, people react in strange ways to lack of follow through or follow up. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah, no. And I mean, just myself, I feel slighted when someone says they're going to do something and they don't. I'm just like, oh, I guess they don't want to, you know. Yeah. So, so I always remember a great statement under promise and over, -deliver. over deliver. If you under promise and over deliver with less people, you will actually create more momentum than having to try and do that with hundreds of people. You, you only need a handful of really, really solid, new, meaningful connections that you meet every month to create momentum. And a lot of people, they think it's a numbers game. It is a numbers game in terms of being top of mind, but it's not a numbers game in terms of developing meaningful relationships. Oh, so. absolutely. And I mean, what has made it even more clear is like the way that the algorithms work within LinkedIn, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fast track on to you now. I've talked a lot, and so I know oh, you got wow. some exciting. I know you got some exciting things coming up starting on the 21st of this month, right? So I do, why, I do. yeah, why don't you do a plug for what you've got coming up, and then how people can get involved in that? So okay, so on the 21st, um, there's a group of us, and you know how this came up was during the pandemic. Um, you know, people were unable to meet in person. Right. And so many of the small business owners and solopreneurs and, you know, all of us on LinkedIn were like, oh, we're not going to be able to do any Christmas things. So uh -huh. I had this idea of doing a online market, you know, to help people get their business online, to network online, to do things online. And it was through remote. Mm -hmm. um, so Andrew knows a little bit about that because recently he introduced me to Toucan, which okay. is some sort of a platform. It's a networking platform. Mm -hmm. um, it can be used to hold conferences and it's really kind of fun. And you can't really explain what it is until you use it. But the best way I can come up with so far is like, imagine yourself as like an avatar. Mm -hmm. And the point of the video game is to network uh -huh. <laughs> and learn. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> So on October 21st, we're having the Harvest Moon Mingle. Harvest and Moon Mingle. So it is actually the Harvest Moon, right? On that day, right? Uh, well, right. it's all month, really. Um, yeah. This week in China is like the golden week right. where, you know, everybody everybody's off because it's mid-autumn festival, right? <laughs> uh, we've planted the seeds, you know, we've watered it and sunned our crops all year long 
-hmm. And now it's time to harvest. Well, you know, the same thing can go with our relationships that we've been planting, watering, nurturing. Um, So come, uh, I'm going to leave the event bright. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That would be great. It might be after because I can't talk and do it at the same time. (laughs) Oh, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Um, To the harvest moon. Well, if Chris or anybody is on here. Oh, I don't think. I don't think Chris can be on here right now. He said, okay, Here we go. you can drop it in there. No problem. You can drop it in when the re- the recording will be in the featured section of my page. So, and I'll send you the link to the replay. So no problem. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, here it is. simpler, faster, better for everybody. Right. So yeah, no, that's the point of that. And you know, like it's, um, it's Mercury in retrograde, so we're we have to all remember that we're going to have problems with communication this month, right? But yeah. at the event, we have Vernon Webb as our keynote speaker, awesome. and you know as well as I yeah. do, he concentrates on mindfulness, and mm-hmm. I get the feeling that anyone who comes is really going to benefit from that. Right. Yeah. So uh, if Abram's still on, Abram, uh, Vernon's a local guy in California. So I think you've been on a LinkedIn virtual with him before. So uh, I can't attend, unfortunately, but I'll see if I can get some follow up anyway. All right. So uh, we're unless you have anything else, we're about to close. So. okay, And um, I want to plug. Jose Montoya and I are having a regular LinkedIn live every single Friday called Coffee Break Logistics Happy Hour. Right. What time is that? That's Eastern Standard Time? That's um, 10 a.m. his time, so Pacific. Okay. And noon Central Time. Okay. And 1 p.m. Eastern. All right. And it'll be just like this. Bruce, there'll be conversations, but um, instead of networking, we talk about logistics, we talk about supply chain, we talk about trade, and how that affects all of us. Like, yeah, who hasn't, um, who isn't touched by the supply chain? Uh, everybody on the planet, which is why with the whole cargo container thing and all the uh, out of balance stuff being in the wrong place at the wrong time, that's why we're in chaos right now. So. Absolutely. I do. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much. And uh, again, if you're seeing this as a replay, you can still ask questions. Just put hashtag replay. It makes it easier to find the questions that have come after the live. Thanks, everyone that was on live with us. We uh, really appreciate uh, you watching and making commentary about what we were talking about. And uh, if you'd like to hold on, Benita, then we'll say goodbye to everyone. Bye.